Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to have the opportunity to talk to you about how we um, developed the facades with the architect and the team and went on to work with the facade contractor and to deliver the project. So I'm going to, we've got about 50 slides, so they're going to be quite quick. Um, and I know we're running a little bit late. I'd ask if you, if you do have any questions, please could you ask um, at the end. Um, if we don't have time to answer them, please do send any questions on to Richard Stills and he can answer them. So, how the facade design and enduring um, from concept to installation. I hope I've got this. Can you? Sorry, I'm. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to very briefly tell you about the role of the facade engineer. Um, I know many of you are architecture students, planning and construction. You may not have heard of facade engineers. Um, we're actually a, oops, on, that's it. Uh, it's a relatively new discipline. Um, it involves architects and engineers. I myself am a, a fully chartered architect. Um, I've been working in engineering now for nine years. Um, the interesting thing with facade engineering, which really the last 20 years, it's been the, the complexity of facades, um, the complexity as well of um, the energy um, Issues now, certainly part L, we found we're getting far more involved in actually um, developing facades, making sure they're energy efficient with the teams. And again, something certainly we found in the last few years is the complexity of facades and certainly complex geometries. Um, also, people seem to forget that actually the facade can often be up to or more than 20% of the cost of the whole building. So it is a major element and a major cost of the building. So it's, it's important that it's designed well and efficiently, and that the facade contractor um, working with on the project um, is fully aware of all of, of the issues. Okay, so how did we get involved on, um, on the project? Well, we're part of a, a Ramble, a multidisciplinary engineering firm. Um, Ramble structures were already involved uh, mm -hmm. when we first um, came in involved with the project. So we, we joined it at stage C. Um, we then took it through to stage D, E, and F. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of all the REBA um, stages, but we then went on to tender it um, with a performance specification. Um, at that point, um, a facade contractor was appointed, and they, well, we then went on to work through with the facade contractor to agree the details, um, actually test the facade, and then go through the, um, the site um, installation. Okay, so as I said, we developed the facades with the appointed facade contractor. Um, the facade is generally what we call a CDP, a contract design portion, which actually means the facade contractor actually takes on the full design responsibility of the facade. Um, obviously, what we need to do is make sure the facade contractor has built what we have designed, which is why we tend to get involved on these complex facades. Once the, um, as I said, the system's agreed, we then go on to test it. And this is particularly if it's a bespoke system. Um, and as, you, as you've seen with your building here, it, it is a very um, particular facade. It's very bespoke. So it did need a lot of testing. Um, once we agree, once it's passed the test, we can go on to the manufacturing and then they go on to the installation. So this was the vision. Um, a, a fascinating project because... As you can see, um, and you've probably seen many of the images of the project, each facade, each elevation is very particular um, and, and really quite complicated. And in all of the experience I've had working with facades, this has probably got the most facade types we've ever had to deal with on one project. So we were first, first involved in spring 2008. Um, and when we first joined the project, I went to the first meeting with the architect and I was joyfully told by the architect that I've identified 63 different facade types. I was thinking, great, you know, we've got to specify each of these. So we went through a rationalisation process. Now the other um, obvious complexity with the project was we needed to um, meet Briam Excellent. It was also a naturally ventilated project, so opening lights also added complexity to the project. So we can go on to the next one. So. How do we go around developing the facades? Well, we have to coordinate with all the other disciplines. Obviously, the architectural is the one that really pushes 
gives us the design intent. We then have to look at the structural aspects, the coordination with the, uh, with the structural slabs, the movements and tolerances, the services strategy, Partel in particular on this one, um, and obviously daylight factors. Certainly for an educational building, you're looking for good daylight factors. Again, there's the fire um, issues and also the acoustics. And again, with having teaching rooms, acoustics is very important. And one that people seem to forget so often is the cleaning and maintenance. So often you'll tend to find a project gets to tender and suddenly it's actually how are we going to clean the windows or how are we going to access them for replacement. So all of these things have to be taken into consideration. Once we've actually established these key prime, primary criteria, we go on to develop the outline solution. And what we then did is we actually took these 63 different types and we rationalised them into um, the main types were um, stick curtain walling, um, unitised curtain walling, rain screen cladding and stone cladding. Um, next one. Um, for the purposes of this presentation, what we're going to concentrate on more is the stick and the unitised cladding, which is the package that was um, delivered or is being delivered by Focchi. Um, they're an Italian facade contractor. Um, I think it just takes rather too long to go through, through the others. Anyway, we've, we've already talked about the parameters we were designing to. Um, I think the other thing that's, that's very key is actually understanding durability of the facades, um, the design lives that are required of the facades. And again, this is a key aspect in the performance specification that we put forward. OK, so developing the facades. Um, when you're looking at facades, it's not just about the facade supporting its own weight. It also has to take account of other loads. So from a structural point of view, you're, we're looking at the deflections um, with the, the slab edges and obviously the dead weight of the facade, long-term creep, etc. But we're also, um, something I learned, and myself being an architect and going into facade engineering, is, is, is wind loads. We don't really learn about those, at, uh, well, I didn't learn about those at architectural school. So again, these have a, a big impact on the facades. And we have to understand all these different loads so that we can actually size the facade's um, elements. And we do this early on in the design so that the architect can actually understand what zones they have to deal with. Um, so often you'll find that, you know, we'll draw a facade um, and it's, it's 100 mil deep. In fact, you find it's actually, a th you need a zone of 300 mil deep once you put the insulation in, etc., etc. Okay, so we've talked about all... Um, this is a great image, actually, because it shows all the different types that we had to deal with. Um, and as I said, they were unitized and stick. Um, let's move on to that one. So our first, at, at about stage D, we took every single elevation, and there were about 30 um, elevations, and we, we typologized all of them. Um, and in that way, rationalizing them into, in this case, stick and uh, unitized curtain walling. I'll go on a little bit to explain the difference between stick and, and unitized if you're, you're not really aware what they are. Okay, again, the structural analysis, understanding the structural um, philosophy behind the, uh, the facades. Here we had the, the, the blue elements were primary structure and the red was secondary. And we were trying to look at a way of, um, of, of, of having different sized elements. The architect was very keen on um, having a hierarchy of elements. So the, the mullions are the vertical elements and the transoms are the horizontal elements. They wanted to actually look at those in a rational way. So we came up with various um, structural philosophies. And if we could have the next one. And, we, and some of them are obviously more rational than others. And this was the one that we actually ended up for, for the project. And this is for the main, main library building. So the other thing um, is actually looking at the aesthetic. How do you treat the joints, for example? And we, we actually had a lovely day in London where the design team all got together and um, I arranged a little walk. And we spent six hours walking around London looking at various buildings, just looking at the different details. And it, it really is that point where the architect were very particular about do we have a recessed joint or a, a flush joint? And obviously London is a great place to um, look at lots of these elements. So again, when you're looking at the detail, I think you can see from the building here, it, it divines the elements through these rather nice deep joints. 
so anyway, stick a very quick um, uh, comment on stick um, facade systems are basically on-site built systems. Um, basically, the, the mullions and the transoms are installed on site as sticks, and then the infill panels are, are put on afterwards. So at this stage, um, the detail on the right shows the sort of details we were coming up with at stage D and stage E to just develop the facades to a point where we knew we had a defined aesthetic and we knew that taking that forward when we get to the contractor on board, we actually have them tied down to a certain aesthetic that the architect's pleased with. I'm going to talk, they're just showing you some of the details. This is for the a detail for the food hall. Um, and for this particular one, because of the um, height of the facades, we actually had to have um, some reinforcement within the uh, facade elements. This again, there, there were some very um, complex um, stick systems for this project. This is what we call the sawtooth, which is on the main block. This is actually under construction at the moment, isn't it? No, it's installed. Isn't it? it's, it's installed now. Um, and there was a complexity here. This is a, a, a cut through the plan where you've got this projecting piece of glass which is cantilevering. And it's making sure that glass is stiff enough to resist impact, etc. There was also complexity of, in, of integrating glass louvers. And again, this, this deep element um, on the right-hand side. Now, unitized systems are prefabricated systems. Um, they are becoming more and more favoured because you get better quality building the um, facade panels off-site. Um, they do have a complexity in, um, obviously, the jointing between them, but they do tend to save time on site, and they also do tend to be a better quality, but that, again, comes with cost. Um, these are just some of the examples of the different um, unitized systems. So, effectively, you... you the mullion comes in two halves and they are effectively joined on site. So again, these are some of the... Uh, this is another one where we had to have an integrated actuator within the, uh, the system. What's rather nice is when, having seen the buildings, that you don't really notice that you've got opening uh, lights. They're, it's all very nicely hidden in the transom. Um, obviously, the curtain wall has to integrate with other materials. Um, and in this case, we have, as once the building's completely finished, you will see how many <laughs> different materials there are. So we were, we were integrating with rain screen, and we were also, the next one, also integrating with stonework. Um, there is a, a, an amount of handset stonework on the, on the project as well. Right, so how do we select the facade contractor? Um, the main contractor, Lang O'Rourke, was appointed. Um, we then put together a tender package for the facades. And this basically um, included the architect's design intent drawings, um, our performance specification, and the structural movement and tolerances report. Um, obviously, as well, it has to include all the energy requirements for the facades and any acoustic and fire requirements. Um, we started off with five facade contractors, uh, shortlisted four, and then we came down to two. And the one who was successful, so this is quite interesting. At tender stage, each of the five contractors came back with their potential solutions for the facade. This really helps us at tender stage um, realize whether the facade contractor is going to give us what we want um, towards the end, obviously taking it out of the design intent. Um, and it's really interesting because sometimes you'll find the contractors will be a bit lazy and they'll send you back a proposal which really doesn't meet what the architect wants or doesn't meet our specification. And um, it's quite interesting to see how, how you go through the process of, of getting the right contractor on board. Right, so um, the appointed facade contractor was a company called Focke. They're a, a pretty large facade contractor very used to complex uh, projects, and they were awarded the, uh, the project. I'm now going to hand over to Kevin, who's the senior structural engineer for the project, and he basically took the project on from, um, for the site stages. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, it's nice uh, Nisha took, you, took us to the, the 
the facade to all the journey all the way down to nearly to site. Then um, f when Foki is uh, appointed, the first thing we ask them, them to do is to build the, the visual mock-up. The purpose of the visual mock-up is really, uh, first of all, is to test uh, the, uh, the architectural design intent to see all the when all the material is put together, how do they look like? Are they uh, do they look like uh, the where the, well the architect I expected, and and also there are some fine details you can uh, test on these uh, visual markup. For example, the on the image on the right hand, uh, or it should be the left on your on your side. <coughs> Uh, there is a, a clip that for the safety for the glazing that uh, the Foki proposed, uh, which uh, isn't in the architectural uh, vision. They really hate it, and uh, we got the, the the clients, which is in this case is a university, came came down to Italy. This visual markup was built in Italy in Foki's factory. Came down, had a look, and uh, everybody hated it. So. We had a like two hours discussion in Foki's meeting room just to get rid of this clip. At the end, we did we did that. Then uh, after the the visual markup was signed off by the architect and the client, uh, Foki carried the the project to system design. When that signed off, it it was a. Uh, uh, it went to the testing. Um, Foki built this uh, prototype. Um, the, the purpose for the testing is uh, for the uh, air leakage and the water leakage, make sure that what they designed, what they think will be airtight and the watertight, it really does what it is supposed to do. Because the, now, nowadays the, the <coughs> facades take are so complex it, they are like uh, sometimes it can have uh, hundreds of different uh, uh, extrusions aluminum extrusions or EPDM gasket extrusions um, you can it's fine you can draw them on the on the drawing and just think about uh, how do you keep the uh, facade watertight but there are always going to be something unexpected uh, to happen for example, this facade, uh, it was uh, designed, uh, everybody looked at it, was happy, went to the test. When we got off the plane, they said, uh, got a phone call, said, uh, oh, we, the pre-test failed. They found a water leakage. Well, we are just an hour away from their, their, their factory to witness the, pr the, the formal test. So we went down there, had a look, and uh, find, worked with the Foki together, find the, the the problem was was causing the water leakage, and uh, worked with the, the architect together, find a solution which is uh, acceptable to everybody, and uh, it obviously it doesn't leak. Then we went back. This is these images are the second test after the modification, and the second uh, test that passed that wasn't any leak water leakage. Um, yeah, the the. After the water leakage, the uh, facade is uh, also being put on the, the design the design wind load for the, the pressure uh, to check the deflection is within the limit, and uh, it's uh, then took to the, the, the maximum wind load uh, with the safety factor, make sure nothing is falling off. We don't want the glass to get blow off. Um, yeah, um, <coughs> after that, th that's the next slide we were going to show you later on. Uh, after the, the wind loads uh, uh, test, we also did the impact test. Then uh, when it's passed, we took the, the whole proto prototype apart, piece by piece, um, even down to a uh, gasket uh, screw, we took them apart and uh, find the, how it's built and uh, learn the lesson like the uh, including the workmanship and the, the, the how 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 the, the the guys actually put them together, like the, the images on your right hand side, you can see the the workmanship on the bottom right corner is a bit cr 
not ideal. So we commented it. So they, when they get to site, they don't make the same mistake. And the right top corner, they, uh, I'm thinking, I guess they, they didn't know where to put the silicone. So they put loads of them. It's all black. So after we took them apart, we found where the water, because these uh, systems, they, they do allow the water in the system, but should they eventually drain out of the system. So we took them apart to find where the water is, is it uh, where we want them to be, and uh, <coughs> find uh, 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 what, what silicon is critical, is working, and uh, the, the ones we don't actually need. So we make a record, uh, record uh, make sure they, they do the same on, the, on site. Yeah, there's uh, yeah. This is a video. See if they. Yeah. We're not sure if this is going to work, so. <laughs> it may take a bit of time. No. no. Uh, okay, it didn't work. So, so this is an impact test. Uh, they basically, you have a double tire with a steel rod, steel rod, rod in the middle to give it the weight and swing the against the glass. Make sure it doesn't break the glass. <coughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is uh, we also tested the the roof, the glazed roof. Uh, have a sandbag dropped on top. This is to stimulate a maintenance pe person uh, doing the cleaning or maintenance uh, fall onto the glass, so the glass shouldn't uh, break, or even if it breaks, shouldn't let, uh, allow the person to fall through or the, the glass fall through the frame. Uh, we also did the hot body impact. Um, so actually, they did the two pieces. One of them got broken, but the board didn't drop through. The other one didn't break. So it all passed. It's safe. Um, yeah. Next. Yeah. When the, the system all passed the test, so we go to the the detailed design for the project specific. So with loads of interface, as Nisha has uh, uh, introduced, this uh, uh, project is very complex. As I put it away, this could be a tech, you could write a textbook about facade on this project because you have uh, all different type of facades on this job and loads of uh, interfaces. Um, we Foki produced these, these uh, drawings, detailed drawings. We comment. Uh, architects and uh, ourselves commented on every single of their draw drawings reviewed, make sure the architects will get what they want, uh, make sure we, uh, the, uh, their drawing, uh, uh, their design compliant to the, to the, our specification perform, perform as it should be and uh, the clients get what they paid for. Uh, we also uh, reviewed their structural calculation. This image shows a computer modeling of the uh, round-shaped glass. Uh, it's a glass roof to be installed in the football. And uh, everybody here should be have, have a chance to walk on top of it when it's done. Uh, yeah, um, we also reviewed their thermal calculation. The purpose for the doing the thermal calculation is to uh, to evaluate the the thermal bridging uh, to uh, to draw the uh, the overall th thermal performance of the uh, the facade. Make sure it's uh, uh, it's performing as uh, it's supposed to be, and uh, it complies with uh, the assumption made by the MAE engineer. So it's. The, the heating system is uh, is man enough to 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 heat the building up. Also, this the purpose of the the, the thermal analysis is to analyze the condensation. So you may have the condensation in a certain area, but you you don't want the condensation on the internal surface, and also the where the material could be could uh, have a problem with the liquid water. Uh, so we did all these. Um, so the system is proved that that's almost the design. Uh, the design. So it's quite a journey to from the beginning of the project to where we uh, the, the design is uh, nearly done. 
So we will have a look at the, the journey of the materials. So the, the countries uh, involved are, we've got Austria, Italy, obviously we've got UK and the Oxford side. If we just click. Yeah, first the material is glass. The glass is made in Austria. So it was built into a double glazer unit, then shipped to the Italy to focus factory. Get them installed in, uh, in focus factory into the units. Then the, the whole units to, are, took to the, um, are taken to Oxford side, get installed. Then we have a fiber C uh, cladding. They came. From, they are made in Austria, as well. Um, they got to de uh, deliver to site directly from the factory. Then we have aluminium uh, that's uh, procured in Italy, uh, made uh, fabricated by Focchi and delivered to site. Same for the steelwork. Is uh, uh, Focchi find a very good uh, steel fabricator? Um, did a fantastic job there. Then we have the insulation. Some of them, when uh, for the unitized uh, curtain wall, it was uh, <coughs> procured in Italy and came to site. For the ring screen on site installed uh, facade, it was made in the UK. So we said that we want to be uh, procured material as local as possible. So that's. A, so now we, we hit site, the, the real stuff hit site now. Uh, this is the installation of the uh, one of the curtain wall system. Uh, it's on top of the, the Abercrombie. Uh, you should be able to see. You may not have seen it on the roof, but should have seen it from the, the, the inside. Um, with a very big, chunky steel because it's uh, cantilevered from, uh, from new and existing roof. Then you have a uh, aluminum carrier frame installed as a stick, as Nisha said. Then the infill panels goes on. Um, this is the internal view when it's uh, nearly finished. Uh, the Abercrombie that pop up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is uh, another uh, stick curtain wall system. This is a sawtooth, as Nisha have showed you the sketches. Um, image on the left hand side is uh, that the people are installing the brackets the frame get installed then the, the image on the right hand side with the glass installed already then you can see the projecting glass fortunately they didn't break any piece during the any piece of glass during the installation because uh, they are very expensive <laughs> Yeah, every, every piece weighs about 800 kg. And then this is uh, the image of installing the um, unitized cladding uh, or unitized uh, curtain walling. What they do is uh, first, uh, the, when they build, cast the concrete, they cast the uh, uh, embedded uh, channel in there. Then they can Foki can fix the, the brackets onto the structure without on site drilling. Then the, the units are already made in the factory. They are delivered in the pallet, like the bottom right corner, uh, and craned on, in the, on the building. Uh, it's a very quick uh, process. It, the advantage of the unitized uh, curtain walling is uh, it's quick to install. Uh, yeah. uh, if they get enough crane time, they can install probably a story in a few days. Um, and the quality, you can have a better quality assurance because most of them are made in the factory. So it's very good environment. And uh, another one is uh, it's, uh, very good for the safety because there is no need for the external access. You can see every guy, all the installation team are standing on in the building. They are behind the, the safety uh, handrails. Uh, hand um, also, in the, 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 the unitized uh, uh, curtain wall also has the ability to accommodate more structural movement, so it's less demanding for the structure, uh, which gives uh, the structural engineers uh, uh, more freedom to, to do things more pioneer. 
this is another example for the uh, unitized curtain wall on this project. Uh, this, uh, you can see that the curtain wall goes up before any scaffold. Uh, there is no scaffold required. They ins actually installed the, the curtain wall before the, the uh, scaffold around the area get erected. Um, so that's a, just a, to demonstrate it's really quick. Um, we're trying to, to you, because of the advantage of the speed, the, the safety issue, we're trying to unitize the, the facade wherever possible, wherever it meets the architectural design intent. Um, but there is a balance. Not everything can be pre-assembled. For example, these are projecting uh, thing, glass things. Uh, basically, the, the units are made in the factory and shipped to site, but these things are uh, delivered separately from the glass factory directly, and then they got to fitted to the units before hang up on the building. Uh, yeah, so we, during the inst installation stage, we also did the regular site inspection. The purpose of the site in inspection to, is to see the, um, what, what's installed is what set, it says on the drawing and it's, it complies with the, the specification. It gives us uh, the performance and uh, that, uh, it doesn't take, uh, cause any problem in the future. So an uh, example is, uh, of uh, what we found uh, on the during the site inspection is uh, on the left hand side is a, a cruciform um, interface at the testing panel. Just as, although it's a, a lot of silicon there, you can see that the, the gasket stops short. Uh, there is a drainage channel on the mulling, so it's drain, drained to the bottom of the, tran the, the, the transom at the, the bay. Uh, on the right hand side, originally found on site, the, the gasket was uh, taken to the, the, the middle of the, the mullein uh, and the, it was sealed off. So any water get, get into that, that drainage channel is stuck there. So it's these uh, little details that could make a, a big difference to the system because if you have the Right, the detail on the right hand side not rectified, you would have uh, water stuck in there, could get the, find a way into the building. So we spotted it and they told the Foki that that's not right. They, then they, they corrected it. Uh, yeah. Also, what could happen on site is um, not just the uh, not in compliance with uh, the drawing is uh, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't it has a discrepancy with uh, the manufacturer's uh, instruction. For for example, on these images, you can see the <coughs> the panel has sh supposed to have one security screw. Now they have uh, two screws, so that means uh, the both ends of the panel is restrained; they can't move. And when uh, the the panel absorbs, absorbs uh, moisture or get heated up once it expand. Uh, if it's, uh, extra, uh, if it's uh, fixed, it could uh, cause uh, bowing or, event or even cracking. So we, we ask them to take one of the screws out. Not, we don't care which one they take out as long as there is only one there. Um, also, the, they, they all uh, often found that everything could be ideal, uh, everything was uh, pre-made, uh, but on site uh, anything could happen. What they found is uh, these brackets are supposed to have a, a steel box sitting over it. These brackets are like a, a few mil couple of millimeters too big. The steel box can't get in. So th they grinded them down, grinded the, the angle to guide the, the steel box to go in. But by doing that, they take the, the, the galvanizer coating away. So uh, we, we found this on site. We asked them to repair the coating. Otherwise, it, it, might, it might be fine now, but won't be fine in years later. Um, we also 
look at, watched out uh, the QA, the, the quality assurance. Uh, it's a very subtle detail. Um, this glass is made by Sangman. Is uh, they are a major uh, European glass manufacturer. You would think they do like uh, tons of glass every every year or maybe every week. Uh, QA should shouldn't be issue, but sometimes you do come across is not not a major thing, but as long as you, you cast an eye, an eye on it, you sh the, the, the PVD should be trimmed off before it gets hung up. Um, well, yeah, this, this is uh, a bit messy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you, you got this uh, membrane, they call it a membrane, uh, a bit like a sticky stuff uh, that we. With uh, the aluminum foil on one side, the other side uh, actually is an uh, ash filter sheet. Uh, it's very sticky. And uh, the, they're trying to stick it onto the silicone uh, sealant. Uh, actually, they, they are not com uh, uh, compatible. The, the bitumen doesn't s stick to the silicone sealant. So we, we ask them to change the product or change the, the where the, the interface, so make sure it, the, um, this membrane proposed by Foki uh, stick onto the animal face, not to the silicone. Uh, yeah, when, when you think we've done so much, we've done the design, we've done the review the calculation, we've done the prototype test, we've done the site inspection, but that's not enough, we think. To give you or give our client a, a good building, the finish of the facade is tested again um, with the water sprayed onto the, the facade, make sure there is no water inside of the building. Uh, this is the, called the host test. Uh, the main purpose is uh, to test the, the, the workmanship on site. Now the so far, we have uh, installed the facade already. I'll hand it back to Nisha to wrap up this uh, presentation. Okay. So, really, hopefully you can see from um, what we've talked about that it really is a team effort, starting with um, the architect's design intent. So this is one of the initial drawings from them, which we then took on to this detailed uh, um, sketch at preliminary design. Um, that then is taken on to a construction drawing by the contractor Focke, and there it is installed on site. So, um, as I said, it's a it's a purely team team effort, and making sure everyone's um, working together to get the product that meets the architect's design intent, meets the performance, meets the client's requirements, and hopefully is on budget <laughs> um, and on time. So. Here are your lovely inf installed facades. Um, the rest of them should be delivered next year. Um, so there we are. Thank you. Hopefully that's uh, giving you some <laughs> Thank you very much. I look forward to reading the textbook on, on the <laughs> facades of the, of the new building. Um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, question three. If, oh, uh, what about the uh, materiality of the opaque panels, uh, the cladding panels, the greyish ones? The, the, the fibre C. Fibre C, so yeah. carbon fibres, you mean? No. It's, it's, it's got glass fibres in it. Um, glass fibres, yeah. Yes, it's got With glass fibres in it. In and and it's, got, it's a resin, effectively. Yeah, like an epoxy fibers. resin or something like that. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did uh, went to the fiber C factory to see how do they make. Okay. Basically, what they have is uh, it's a concrete. It's a concrete with a fine uh, aggregate. So they put a um, thin layer of concrete, then put a mesh on, and then a layer of concrete. They got uh, quite a few mesh in there. Uh, this product actually. You can, they, 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 the manufacturer had a video, you can, uh, a long piece of thin panel, you can stand the three, guy, three guys on it. Thank you. Yeah. Hello.
Hello. Um, did you use any building information modeling in not, the details? Not for this. Um, the, the structures team did actually use um, a, a 3D model. Our um, RAML structures do tend to. What we're finding now is um, the facade contractors are not really up to speed on BIM yet. Um, I attended a conference this year with the CWCT and a number of facade contractors were there and, and we're, we're warming them up to the fact that they may have to start getting into the BIM modelling. I think the problem is the, for BIM trying to get the facade contractor involved, it, they come on a little bit too late. But it may be that us as facade consultants, we may have to take on board a little bit of that with the, the zones for BIM. But, you know, BIM, BIM's going to be here for, well, it's here for good now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really whether, you know, the facade contractors can, can really take it on board. We, we feel that maybe they can come on a little bit too late. I think really where it's going to help us is um, the, the clash detection, certainly for the services with the structural items, and then us giving facade zones where we can see those potential clashes. But no, it's, uh, it, it's a hot topic at the moment, certainly. Yes? With the facade, so there were 67 different facades, did you consider using more than one um, facade contractor? Um, it was discussed, yes. Um, the issue is that if you, in fact, we, we talked about using a separate facade contractor for the Abercrombie pop up and then another one for the, the main new buildings. The problem is, if you have a facade contractor, they have to warrant the design. And that would have meant that we would have had to do the testing twice. And that is a lot of cost to the client. So there was that discussion because it was felt that maybe the Abercrombie building was a, a, a little simpler and they could go to a facade contractor who maybe wouldn't be quite as, uh, or maybe a little more cost efficient um, than, than Focky would be. Um, but when you look at the testing and the fact that it would have doubled up the number of drawings we would have had to review as well um, from the system. So um, there, there is a separate contractor being used for the stonework, um, which is quite normal. Uh, but for the curtain walling on a project, it's generally sensible to try and keep one. I would say, but having done the, the BBC project at uh, Regent Street, we did actually have seven different facade contractors on board for that project because it was such a, a massive project. And out of the five facade contractors that were at tender stage, um, were any of them UK based? And were you keen to um, use some of them? We did, UK? yes, we did speak to um, one of the UK contractors. Um, it's, it's interesting because, um, again, I did a, a conference talk to about 200 of the UK industry facade contractors. Um, they tend to be quite, they tend to be smaller than, than the Europeans. Um, and a lot of them haven't really started working with unitized facades either. So um, they haven't done themselves an awful lot of favors. I think they, they are improving a lot now, but we seem to find that the, um, the Europeans are, tend to be more innovative. There are some very good UK facade contractors, maybe for some of the smaller projects. But also, that what's coming into the market now is a lot of the Chinese contractors are becoming are, are very competitive. So, quick question. Uh, I suppose Focky is usually uh, working with uh, European standards, UNI normatives. Did they know also the BS standards? Or um, I mean, Focky do a lot of work here. Um, the the um, and as of course you, you know more about familiar with the codes and, and the euro yeah. euro norms and coming in but yeah. in in fairness Focky are, are you know the European guys tend to know the the standards um, and as I said even the Chinese contractors now are having to fall in line with what's required here. Sorry, lady. Um, did you work with an environmental consultant at all in order to achieve? Yes, yes, there was, um, I mean, it was, a, it was a really huge team, actually. We had um, Roger Preston's, we're looking at the Partel side of it. Um, what we do is we coordinate with them to make ensure that the facade performance states what U values are required, what G values are required. Um, 
that those things at the beginning of a project are really important because they'll affect, for example, the, the effect on the glass. If you've got a very low G value to stop too much solar coming in, your glass can be quite dark. Um, so it's getting all of those values absolutely right at the beginning, which is, is essential. And, um, you know, in projects in the past, you find that we get called on a bit late and the services engineer's popped all his numbers in his machine and said, oh, I've got a G value of 0.1. And you go to find the glass and it's nearly black. But, you know, it meets his criteria for his services. But that's just so important about getting your criteria, your performance criteria, agreed in the t with the team early on getting samples very early on of your materials, um, and certainly for things like glass, it's, it's absolutely essential. All right, we're going to have to wrap that up now, I'm afraid it's kind of almost one o'clock. If you have any further questions, you can email me, space to think at brooks.ac.uk, or you can tweet, um, hashtag builtups, capital B, capital T. <laughs> So next year I'll plan on doing the same thing, um, there'll be six talks, let me know if you have any particular people that you want me to get to talk to you about, um, but thank you all for coming this semester, I hope to see you all again next semester. Cheers guys.